Uh, two members of the team at Henry Ford Jackson Hospital that have gone on mission trips to serve others. We welcome Keith Miller and Kelly Hu. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great to have you here. And you both have the same job, same, same role at the hospital. What is it? Certified and registered nurse anesthetists. And is this something that you as a, as a department do go on mission trips? Or is it just a coincidence that you both have the same, uh, same role? There have been a number of our colleagues that have gone. Um, other, team, other members of the healthcare team have also gone, nurses, uh, physicians, um, family members, surgical techs. So when you go on mission trips, and both have been, and I think you've been on more than one, you are acting as a clinician, right? You're That's doing correct. your job. You're, you're being a nurse anesthetist. Is that hard to say? Does it get easier to say the longer you do it? It does. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. <laughs> well, let's first, uh, what is a uh, reg certified registered nurse anesthetist? What do you do? Um, we are uh, advanced um, uh, uh, nurse practitioners who have been um, um, uh, doing nursing for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of us uh, have worked as ICU nurses. Um, and uh, then uh, we go on to grad school to have a special training in anesthesia. Um, our main job is uh, to get patients safely through surgeries. And uh, we um, um, do pre-op assessment, make sure patients are safe or in a good place to go in for surgeries. And then uh, we get them into the operation room, um, get them off to sleep, and uh, monitor them during the surgery, make sure they're safe, administer pain medications, make sure they're comfortable during the surgery, and also prevent uh, them to have severe pain when they wake up. Um, when the surgery is complete, we wake them up and um, um, talk to them, reorient them to, the, to where they are, and um, um, tell them the surgeries have been complete, and then take them to the recovery room from there. A uh, very critical role. Thank you. Yes, and uh, do you have patients uh, like uh, that don't want to wake up? They're in that happy place. Uh, they just, let me stay here a little longer. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> oh, come across sure. that all the time, yeah. Yeah. yes. So you have gone on trips. How many uh, mission trips have you been on, Keith? I've been successfully on four. Um, four? One, I almost made it, but the uh, El Fuego had different um, ideas, so we were stuck in Houston, So but have been four times. So you would have gone one more, but there was a volcano. A volcano, yeah. So where have you gone? Where uh, did you go on your most recent mission? Uh, all mine have been to Guatemala. Uh, the first one was um, Rio Hondo, and then we went high up into the mountain ranges in Weiwei, Tenango, and then the last two have been in San Mateo, Guatemala. And Kelly, what was your most recent trip? My most recent trip was also to San Mateo in uh, Guatemala. Prior to that, uh, I went to uh, Honduras uh, in 2018 and 2019. That was in Tegucigalpa. So Central America, yes, for both of you, and we've got some photos. So you're there because you uh, assist in surgeries and other, uh, um, I guess, uh, procedures that require uh, anesthesiologist. You have you have to be there in order for that to happen, correct? Or someone. Yes, that's correct. Mm. What's um, happening most here? Is this one of your? Oh yes, yeah. that's uh, my favorite patient. It's a six-year-old little girl that uh, we did a hernia repair on, and uh, that was uh, uh, me holding her in the operation room. It was a temporary uh, operation room, so everything's uh, very uh, simple set up. But um, uh, she and I bonded in the pre-op area uh, before the surgery, so she was uh, she got really comfortable uh, when I took her to the operation room, yeah. What's the uh, purpose? Is it the, the countries are um, 
poor or not advanced where we have to send uh, medical teams down? They're just underserved areas. So a lot of these places are third world countries, so it's mm -hmm. hard for them to get adequate <coughs> medical care. So there are a number of organizations that go down and offer these services for the underserved and the rural communities of the area. So Guatemala is uh, a country um, that uh, was plagued with uh, decades of uh, civil war. Mm. And there's a, a lot of social economical issues there. And uh, uh, half of the country's population are native Mayans. And these Mayans uh, live, Seven. a lot of them live uh, uh, in highlands and uh, transportation is not easy. They oftentimes have no medical uh, service whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them, uh, uh, their health issues are not treated um, in a timely manner. So in, those, in that situation, any kind of Mayans, they, do they have ancient uh, practices that they use for treatment of certain conditions? Yes, absolutely. A lot of them deal with their medical issues uh, uh, with the ways uh, that their ancestors uh, handed down um, for generations. But uh, some of the issues are not, uh, cannot possibly be adequately treated mm -hmm. with uh, those methods. For example, cancer. And um, for example, gallstones. Mm -hmm. uh, if a gallbladder is filled with the stones, they have to come up. So. Right. Let's take a look at some of the uh, photos uh, that you brought. Is, what, what do we see here? Uh, that picture is uh, the clinic uh, uh, family waiting or patient waiting area. Waiting room. Yes. Uh, because um, in Guatemala, the weather is um, warm all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, this could be done outdoors. So the tent that was set up for um, uh, patients who are waiting to be seen in the clinic. And uh, of course, this uh, was before the clinic time. Um, usually, there's a long line of people, um, a couple hundred people waiting in line oh to gosh. be seen on a daily basis. Who sponsors these uh, missions? Here, the mission trip that we've gone on to Guatemala is Michigan Helps Team. Mm -hmm. It's an organization that's um, associated with uh, Helps International out of Dallas, Texas. There's someone before or after either way, they're uh, getting top-notch care from Henry Ford uh, clinicians. You get to see a little local color and uh, try some local specialties and things like that right there. Yeah, they have a lot of beautiful tapestries that they make themselves. They have large looms that they make their own um, um, tribal patterns. A lot of them are associated with the villages they're from. They're, it's very neat. What motivated you to get involved in uh, going on a mission, Keith? Uh, back in 2011, my son was interested in the medical field, and he was a high school senior. So I thought, what better way of getting him you know, associated with um, the way medicine works and re reaching out and doing some public service so him and I went down to Guatemala in 2011. So is he going to be a doctor or a nurse? No, he, uh, <laughs> college was not for him. He, he went into the service industry instead. Kelly, what was it that got you interested in these trips? Um, my colleague uh, Larry Stuckey um, probably uh, played a big role in it. Uh, he had been going on mission trips for years and when I started working with him, he got me interested. Once I went with him uh, the first year to Honduras, I was hooked. So, you, Keith, you've been on four, uh, four slash trips. five four. trips. Uh, how about you, Kelly? Um, I've been um, on three trips, two trips to Honduras and one trip to Guatemala. Do you have to bring uh, all your own supplies? And what, what do you, like, what is it like when you get there? A lot of our anesthesia equipment and some of the medications are already in the country. Mm -hmm. They're just stored in crates. Uh, most of the durable medical supplies are donated by Henry Ford Jackson Hospital. Um, 
we we do take our own personal things, stethoscopes, mm -hmm. any uh, special equipment that we like, even some things rudimentary, right down to little clips that hold the drapes up during the surgery. Mm -hmm. So uh, little nuances that we each individually use, but uh, a lot of the supplies are donated by the community. Uh, Sharon Barnes is a retired nurse from the hospital that coordinates this whole trip. So when you go to uh, Detroit Metro, you're checking your personal bag plus a big bag of medical supplies that has been donated from the community. How many people go on a, a, a mission trip? There were probably 100 people this, yes. this last time in February. Yeah, this past February, we had a, a team of almost 100 people, uh, all volunteers. Yeah. You I just want to add that a lot of these supplies were donated by Henry Ford Jackson Hospital and we accumulate the, the donations over time and the volunteers sort out the donations and then we uh, pack them and took them with us. Now you mentioned Mayan people. Did you, do they, what do they speak, Spanish? Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? Oh, very little. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, no. not at all. But you got smiles from those patients. Do you mm -hmm. have a, uh, is there a favorite memory related to an experience uh, with a family or a patient that you recall? Usually, Usually it's the small children. The, the small children, they're raised in uh, single room huts. They have open fires. So a lot of the small children that I've cared for over the past have been uh, there for scar revisions or some or whatnot from falling into the fires. So oh my they're nervous and uh, they come in and we have little stuffed animals for them and try to uh, ease them. And then, um, the communication is really done through the high school kids from the Guatemalan uh, schools. They get the week off to come out and interpret for us. And it's, it's kind of nice. It, it helps their career choices. Uh, they're helping us by interpreting for us and then just hanging out. They get to see some surgeries, you know, that a high school kid wouldn't otherwise see. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. That's it's, pretty a, it's a fun week for sure. Re very rewarding. It's you got some rewards too from the patients you served? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, part of it is knowing that uh, we have provided uh, the much needed uh, medical care for them. For example, some cancer patients had to wait uh, an extended period of time to have the surgeries they needed to remove the um, tumor from their body. Uh, we had a patient who came in looking like she was a uh, nine month pregnant, uh, but actually she had a large uterus tumor. A tumor that was the size of uh, a, a nine month pregnancy. Yes. Wow. Yes, so um, yeah, um, you know, after the surgery, she, she looked like this uh, very small skinny patient that she should have looked, but uh, uh, when she came in, she looked like she was nine month pregnant because mm -hmm she um, had to wait for so long to finally have this opportunity to have the tumor removed. So knowing that we have provided care for patients like her uh, was uh, very rewarding. Yeah, so uh, I guess we take it for granted that we have, we're just 10 minutes, no matter where we are in Jackson, 10 minutes away from uh, top-notch care. What we do. Yes. Well, we appreciate you guys uh, representing our uh, community and Henry Ford Jackson Hospital on your mission trips. Uh, you got more. You're going to go on more uh, more trips. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you for inviting us. Thank you for two of uh, Henry Ford Jackson Hospital's certified registered nurse and that's the tests, Keith Miller and Kelly Hu. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh wow. We